This Flamingo filled video is sponsored by Dragon City, the game that exists and allows you to collect thousands of funky dragon things to construct your ultimate dragon empire. And within this empire, you can do all sorts of things such as breed your dragons to create small dragons who eventually become regular sized dragons. You can also train your lizard folk and take them into battle with you in order to make them far more powerful than they were previously. And along the way, you'll get to unlock all sorts of food, gold and gems in order to expand your city and unlock new city based things. There are a multitude of events each and every week, as well as a new special battle pass to discover, allowing you to unlock new rewards and new dragon dude guys. And you can also find YouTuber based dragons such as Carl. So click the link in the description to get a special free reward, which consists of 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the gear dragon. These will only be available for new users and only for seven days. So get in quick dragon people. But now to our feature presentation about flamingos. There is a hidden flamingo somewhere in this video, plotting and scheming to bring you down. And it's your job to find it before it finds you. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and did you know that a collective noun for a group of flamingos is called a flamboyance? So of course here for you is a flamboyance of Do Flamingo. Because today we're here to discuss quite probably one of the most radically series shaping decisions that has ever been made by the mind brain of Echiro Oda, which is that Do Flamingo was originally meant to be on Wano. As an antagonist, Doflamingo was designed for this very arc and was assumedly meant to take part in the defense against the raid on Onigashima, which is pretty, wow, because it would have changed, I don't know, everything. Because as we've recently examined in another Flamingo based video, Doflamingo's role and subsequent defeat on Dressrosa laid by far the most important groundwork for where we are today. So we're going to examine Oda's original intentions as well as pinpoint the point at which this change was made because it was actually done a lot later than you may think. However, T-Perm, One Finger Man, and The Wood of Door have each done something very recently, which was subscribed to the Grand Line Review, which by the way, doing so will result in consistent injections of One Piece culture administered directly into your YouTube feed. And if you want to be our next subscriber of the day, then hit the button and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new or even old member of the Grand Fleet. Either way, welcome. But now, how do we know these things that we know? Like most of the intriguing things, this comes directly from a six pack of delicious info nuggets from the SBS section of the one Piece manga volumes. And in volume 98, Oda was asked by a reader if all of the beast pirates were named after card games. So think characters like Jin Rummy, Hold'em and Solitaire, for example, all very obviously named after card based shenaniganry. So Oda responded with, yep, indeed. The three all stars are pretty obvious, but all the flying six, the numbers and the headliners, only excluding Drake, Kapu and Hawkins are all named after card games, as well as the King, Queen, Jack and one to 10 cards. Although I would like to point out the fact that there is no way I suppose Kaido himself counts as the ace card of his crew, but it's just not the same because it's just not his name. It's this guy's name and he's dead. So I reckon that Kaido should have just slapped on a cowboy hat, adorned his chest with some red beads and just taken the name for himself. Personal note here, I spent quite a bit of time trying to come up with some sort of pun that involved both Kaido and ace and I, uh, I just couldn't do it. They are just completely incompatible words. So you know, no joke for you. Well, if you've got your own joke, then joke in the joke place. But Oda then went on to give away a massive detail regarding Kaido's crew. By the way, in Dressrosa, Doflamingo being called Joker is a remnant of an initial idea where Doflamingo was going to fight as a powerful companion of Kaido in the Wano country. He's quite the tricky opponent, so I'm glad we got rid of him at Dressrosa, which is pretty wow, but it does make a lot of sense. Even without being on Wano, Doflamingo being assigned the Joker alias does fit quite nicely because he and Kaido are the bestest of business pals. And I'm sure that they both share a good laugh, a bit of wadoodle here and a bit of <laughs> there. Plus it gives us some great insight into how One Piece was originally meant to be significantly more compressed. Oda originally planned for this story to be about facing off against the four emperors from the get-go, but these pesky warlords sprung into existence and significantly elongated One Piece. Kind of like that guy at the pub who just when everyone else is ready to go home, presents the table with a brand new round. And then everyone needs to stay another 20 minutes uh, to be polite, you know. 
But in this case, another warlord appeared, tempting Oda with another round. Then a second, then a third, and you know what? We didn't even stop at seven either, because technically there are 11 seven warlords of the sea. So 11 extra rounds later, we find ourselves in the glorious 25 year hangover that we call One Piece, which has of course been a wonderful experience and I really can't imagine the series without the warlords. However, even with that in mind, Oda didn't necessarily have the warlords designed to take on such primary roles as demonstrated with our medescent flamingo. But my question then becomes, when did Oda decide to back out of this plan and institute an entire saga focusing on Doflamingo? Looking back on Doflamingo is a fascinating experience because you can see his allegiance to Kaido in full retrospective glory. For example, in chapter 303, he rants on and on about quote unquote, it finally starting. An unstoppable wave, a new age of unmatched power, which we only now, like a billion years later, know that this is a reference to Kaido's ultimate ambition of throwing the world into a big old war. And this remains fairly consistent throughout Doflamingo's very few pre-time skip appearances. However, the Joker alias isn't mentioned at all pre-time skip. In fact, I believe the first time we hear the name is chapter 664, placing us smack bang in Punk Hazard, which is intriguing because that is mightily close to Dress Rose, or in fact, it's directly adjacent. And Doflamingo was revealed to be Joker not too long after Joker was revealed to be. So my question is, even at this stage, was Doflamingo still being planned as a Wano antagonist. It's entirely possible because Punk Hazard, despite now being officially part of the Dressrosa saga, is all one big Wano setup. We're introduced to the samurai, the artificial devil fruits, the alliance is formed to take down Kaido. There's a lot of foreshadowing surrounding dragons and Punk Hazard is of course the origin of the numbers. So when we're looking at Punk Hazard, Oda was using this arc as something of a course change. From here, everything was very much full steam ahead to Wano, well, until it wasn't. So something pretty major happened within the production back end of One Piece during Punk Hazard, which isn't particularly surprising because Oda does make incredibly impactful decisions very much in the moment, which we've explored in another video about how much of the One Piece we know and love is just a series of improvised accidents. So it's very possible that when Law formed an alliance with Luffy, his actual target may very well have been Kaido. Instead of the whole deception thing Law pulled where he told Luffy it was Kaido as but a clever ruse to bring down Doflamingo, which seems completely unthinkable with what we now know of Law's deeply connected history with Doflamingo. But as with many other things, I would propose that this may just be a happy accident. There were no plans for Law when he was first introduced and Oda has specifically singled Law out as someone who surprised even him as an author. So what we have here is actually a collision of improvisation because if Oda hadn't decided to create the rest of the supernovas on a whim during Sabadee, then what happens when we get to this point post time skip? Well, things probably play out as originally planned. Without a character like Law to follow into an extended conflict with Doflamingo, what point is there in following him as a primary antagonist? In that sort of situation, Oda probably does save him for the Wano arc. But then what happens to Dress Rosa? Does this arc go ahead as we know it with a different antagonist at the helm? Do we skip the arc altogether and head straight to Zoe from Punk Hazard? Or does it get replaced with a completely different arc on a new and weird island? I suppose the issue is that even if Doflamingo were to be removed from his narrative position here, something along the lines of Dress Rosa does need to happen. Because in the same way that Punk Hazard laid down the path for Wano, Dress Rosa created the road for the end game of One Piece. For example, it saw the formation of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, a series of dude bros who are said to play major roles in the future. It was also our introduction of Fujitora and combined with King Riku, that led to the dissolution of the Seven Warlord system. And then there's Sabo who does Sabo things. So Dress Rosa really had its eyes set on the far future of the series, building a lot of what will be extremely necessary foundation. Basically the arc needs to happen in some way, shape or form. It doesn't necessarily need Doflamingo or the island of Dressrosa, but it does need both an antagonist and a place to happen. However, and this might just be the blindness of retrospect, but it's very difficult to see who would have held that role. Part of what made Doflamingo the perfect choice for that particular time and place was because he was a classic One Piece villain. To this point in the new world, we'd only had new and honestly somewhat disappointing primary antagonists in Hody Jones, Vanderdecken and Caesar Clown. So to go into a new arc like Dress Rosa off the back of that and inventing another new antagonist would be such a risky maneuver. And instead, it was a much better move to show how much the Straw Hats have grown by stacking them up against a previously overwhelmingly powerful enemy. Although one way I could maybe see a new antagonist working is if it was one of the Emperor Commanders. And this may not be a great example, but just go with it. Let's say that Jack was the overlord of Dress Rosa. Wait, no, actually not Jack. Jack sucks. 
someone else. Let's say that Queen was the overlord of Dressrosa and the whole arc focused on this sort of appetizer skirmish against the forces of an emperor of the sea, with Luffy eventually being able to take down someone in that commander status, very much like what Whole Cake Island would go on to be with Katakuri. At the very least, the path to Wano would make some sense. You'd have Punk Hazard planting the seed of a conflict with Kaido. Then you beat one of his commanders on Dressrosa or Commander Island, whatever it may be. And then we move on to Wano for a full scale war. Even so, it sounds kind of rubbish, doesn't it? I do think we got the best possible outcome with Doflamingo in this position and Oda did such a great job with him that there is really no one who could replace him. But the other major curiosity I do have is that if Doflamingo were on Wano, then what would his role be? Because at this point, it would be pretty safe to assume that he isn't being reserved for Luffy. Luffy has much bigger, uglier, and clubbier problems to deal with. And I hate to say it, but if this original idea was implemented, then Doflamingo would probably fade into the background of this raid quite a bit. It's definitely possible that his role as the Joker of the crew would give him equitable status to the Kings, the Queens, and the Jacks. But then again, he may also end up being more like a Scratch Manapu style character, a well-known name who is there, but really hasn't had a lot of involvement in Wano as a whole. And in terms of the raid itself, that means that Doflamingo is liable to be beaten by a lesser protagonist. Although one great option here may actually be to have him stack up against Law. That would be a very interesting option and maybe their flashback could play out in a more condensed format, but we have other options as well. Weirdly enough, Jinbei may also have been an appropriate choice due to their shared history as Warlords of the Sea, as well as standing on opposite sides of the Paramount War. But it just wouldn't have been great, you know? There is so, so much going on in the Wano arc that we barely have the time to flesh out the island specific characters, let alone any extras like Doflamingo would have been. Once again, I'll bring up the Scratch Manipu example and we'll even add Basil Hawkins into the mix. They are carryover antagonists into the Wano arc. They don't have a lot of core personal involvement in the heart of the drama to do with the Kozuki family and, and all of that sort of stuff. So most of the time, they're just kind of there for the, for the sake of being there. And sadly, that more than likely would have been the same role that Doflamingo occupied a carryover villain who was there to add some firepower to an Emperor of the Sea. And it would have been such a monumental waste of his larger than life character. Because when it comes down to it, Doflamingo is not just one of the better villains in One Piece, he's one of the better characters, period. During and since Dress Rosa, he has consistently ranked in the top 20 of officially conducted character polls, with the only two villains capable of unseating his sheer dominance being Crocodile and Katakuri, both of whom are exceptional gems in their own right. So as amazing as it may have been to have a Doflamingo on Wano here with us right here and now, I do think that Impel Down is pretty much exactly where he belongs. And maybe he can spend some time playing Dragon City in the process. I mean, what else has he got to do? Unlike you, who has plenty to do because here is another video. Because there's always more to learn, explore, and experience with this wonderful series. So I look forward to seeing you there.